Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Uh, we're back at Bill Molina's studio in Los Angeles, and um, what a journey! It's been a, it's been an adventure. <laughs> we started out. We brought some demo units in Bill's place, uh, some quadratic one-dimensional diffusion for the rear wall, and then um, all kinds of carbon units throughout the room to handle the problems in his room. And then we uh, unfortunately had to take it out. <laughs> and move it to another location because they are demo units and they do circulate. So Bill had them for a while, a month? Had them for at least a month and fixed, I'd say 80% of the problems in the room. And I was actually able go. to hear, um, hear definition and clarity that I was looking for in the room. And I then it- this up. There you go, go ahead. I hear the definition and clarity that I was looking for in the room. And then they left and I was lost. So, uh, yeah. so Dennis and I, you know, came to an agreement and I got new units and now we're, you know, tweaking the room again and getting it back to where it was and, and the stuff's amazing. It's just, it's voodoo, but it works. Yeah. It's, it's really good in the low end. Yeah. You know, and then the foam together with the carbon really is a nice balance because you can see in the photo that, uh, Bill has some of, uh, the black with the red fabric units here to the, to his right of his console. And uh, we can make the fabric any color you want. We can paint them any color you want. That's easy stuff, you know. It's finding out how many you need in your room and where to place them. And that's a process. And Bill and I are still going through that right now with his because he's had units and then we took them out and, and now he's going to keep these units. So he'll be able to establish a baseline. He'll be able to I'll live with the, the technology for a while, know its strengths. It doesn't have a lot of weaknesses other than it's really heavy and you need a lot of units. A lot of units and it, and it eats up a little bit of space, but... And but, it does. But uh, it's really not that bad. It's a one foot off the wall, you know, square foot off the wall. And, uh, but the advantage is, is amazing. It's, it's really turned it into a usable studio. Yeah. And it's, uh, it does take, so, First things first, when you're considering the technology, is to make sure you have 12 inches all the way around your room, because that's where the technology goes. Now, in some studios with, with the big low frequency drivers, you know, we'll double up on units. You know, we'll actually have a 24 inch thick uh, unit made, and that goes in the high pressure area between usually the subwoofer and the front wall. A lot of these studios have the big low frequency drivers up front for the impact, I get it. But that just doubles the pressure in the front of the wall. So you have to increase, obviously, the square footage of the unit. Makes sense. Diffusion, as you can see behind us, is now two dimensional in Bill's room and it was one dimensional when we first started. You, you have a preference? You've heard both. There's only two kinds. You've heard all there is. I think I'm liking this. I mean, the back wall disappears more, I, I'm feeling, in this setup. And when you say two-dimensional, that, that's vertical because we're going and horizontal. Vertical and horizontal. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Before yeah. we just right, had just vertical. vertical. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, th I feel like this is, is uh, making the back wall disappear more, and I'm, I'm hearing more of the speakers in front of me. Ah, well, there's our objective. So, uh, Bill had not had much experience with diffusion on the rear wall, so I wanted him to try both, and there you go. The proof is in the hearing. Mm -hmm. For a professional engineer, he knows what he's hearing at his mixing position, so... A lot of people like the two dimensions in smaller distances. When you get larger distances, they like the one. And it's really personal, I think. It's a personal thing. The physics are pretty close in both situations. The one dimensional diffuser will give you a broader, wider field of diffusion, where two dimensional goes up, down, sideways, all around for non-localization. So this is really not adding anything, it's just minimizing the reflection so you can't judge distance at the console. That makes sense, that's what yeah. I'm hearing. Yeah, so you get that openness and that non-reflective, because we all know that rear wall's a big problem and you don't want that sound in your mix. Yeah, so it's open and then Bill had some uh, hemispherical uh, sound redirection devices. It was, a, it was a shot in the dark, but it actually feels like it's helping. Yeah, it does, it will help, because that floor to ceiling pressure area that looks like about 90 cycles that we have there. So Bill's got, you know, 90 cycle and up absorption going on the ceiling, which is always welcome in, in these smaller ceilings. So very cool, very cool. 
Well, we're going to keep you posted. This is going to be kind of ongoing if, if Bill's uh, schedule permits and my schedule permits. We're going to go to another phase with Bill's room. We're going to add some more units. We got a little bit of a, well, not a little. We got a 50 cycle bump over here in the left corner that's about 6 dB, and we're going to fix that. Those units are being built as we speak. And then we'll do a follow-up video to kind of wrap it all up and get Bill's final opinions. Because everything you do in a room, every part of the tuning process changes the dynamic of the room. And you, and you really need to know that. And you've never had technology like this to work with. It's kind of like a new uh, plug-in. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, uh, you got to learn how it works. You know, nobody right. reads the directions. Everybody jumps in right. and does it, you know, but um, we can get you that starting point. We can get you that 80, 85% start point on the laws of physics and absorption coefficients. But that 15% tuning is where Bill and I are at now. And uh, to start, we're going to build another five, six units, something like that for the corner. And, and we'll do a follow up on that. Anything else that you wanted to add? No, I just, it, it, I finally found something that works and I'm going to stick with it. It's uh, great product. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're very happy with it. And uh, you don't, they don't come any better than this guy. I mean, this guy's, you can see his credits uh, on, on the uh, project page. And uh, he's been in Los Angeles working with the big guys for a long time. So it's nice that our technology is accepted and, and getting accepted in LA. We're doing some stuff at Capitol again. So it's fun. You know, we're, we're really making some headway and we really have a product now that can manage the problems in your room. It's not that cheap, but it's not that expensive when you outweigh the benefit. I think for the for, for what it does and, and what else is out there, it's it's well worth it. it's, it's, it's value is, is well worth uh, the investment. Yeah, and it's a one-time deal, and then your room is good. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do anything, but the tuning process, like we say, is critical, and uh, get it dialed in. I mean, all things we do in audio. It, there's a tuning, a dialing in, a learning curve. Mm -hmm. All of those things have to go together. I mean, you just don't sit down and produce a hit record. You know, you have to, uh, you know, take a lot of time and go through a lot of steps and apply certain processes. And it's the same with room acoustics. So balancing out how many units you need, and we have a new chart we're going to uh, send to people on that. So if your room is a certain size, you're going to need so many 10, so many 12s, and so many phone panels. We're trying to make it easy for people to Smart. figure it out. So, well, great. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. All right. Thank you.